Welcome to the Bookkeeper Support uh, Review of Zero. So this will just give you a bit of an insight as to how Zero works, and uh, so that you can understand the differences between the the other softwares. So this is Zero. So we've got the dashboard. So the dashboard shows us our bank account. We've got 28 items that have come in through the bank account that we haven't allocated. So they're sitting there ready to go. Our balance in zero is currently 9081.58, but our bank statement balance is 4,242.62. So when we allocate those 28 items, this should match this. Okay, so your balance in zero and your statement balance should match exactly. If there's something wrong, it's going to tell you, okay, that there's something out. Okay, we've got our accounts watch list. So we can choose to have our POYG on there. We can choose to have our sales on there. We can have our superannuation. We can choose whatever accounts we'd like to watch. Okay, so that's in your chart of accounts. We'll go through that. You can have as many bank accounts as you obviously need for the client in there and uh, showing on your dashboard so it's it's quick and easy to access them and down and run through all the items that need to be reconciled here you can in, go into your invoices you can pick any which way to go into your invoices but this just gives you a snapshot overview of what is actually happening okay, so we tend to always come back to our dashboard Again, bills that need to be paid, you can click on anywhere to find out what's going on with the bills um, and go through your dashboard there. Okay, You can edit the dashboard too, so it shows you what's going in. And it, it'll give you a bit of a cash in, cash out, so a bit of a cash flow. So how much was in versus how much was sent out in that time. So obviously there's quite a significant amount that's going out and not enough coming in. Okay. To have a look at those okay so you have your all your tabs across here all your uh, things that you can access so obviously you've got your dashboard which we're looking at right now okay so you can click on that at any time and come back to your dashboard and work from here you've got business which is your invoices, your sales overview, your quotes, bills to pay, purchase orders, etc., uh, and your expenses claims and your product and services. So if you have got inventory or if you want to create recurring services or products, that's where you go to. Okay, you've got your accounting. So you've got your bank accounts, which again are showing up here in the dashboard, but that's how you go and um, access them to see how many are there and uh, if they're not showing all on your dashboard. Your reports, advanced is a setting. It's uh, where some of your settings are, so we'll go through that as well. You've got your account transactions, your activity statement, which is your BAS, okay? And then your, your, uh, your reports that you've got to start next to, so those ones that you use on a regular basis, you can choose that too. And then you have your advanced, your chart of accounts, you find in the code function, which allows you to pick up multiple transactions in say um, the bank fee account if they don't belong there you can pick them up in there and you can actually move them out of there okay and uh, in, in like click of maybe three buttons and it's done it's fantastic uh, you've got a fixed asset uh, like your asset register so you can also put your assets in there uh, as long as you know whether they're straight line or um, reducing balance uh, depreciation Okay, and then you've got your manual journals. So they're your general journals, okay? You've got your payroll. So you've got your overview, your employees. So that's where you set up all of your employees um, ready for pay runs. You've got your pay run, pay employees. You've got um, your leave where you can request leave. You've got timesheets if you have timesheets set up for your client, superannuation and your single touch payroll settings. Okay, then you've got projects. So all projects and time entries against those projects. Okay, so it's a project management system. And then of course you've got all your contacts, your suppliers, etc. Okay. Uh, over here in your drop down box, you've got your files, which is your inbox, okay, where you can um, drop files into, and then you've got some more settings in there. 
Okay, so we're going to start from here. So we're going to go to your files. Okay, so you can create new folders over here and you can say um, this new folder is for bank statements. Okay, so that you, you hold all the bank statements in there. You can put years, you can uh, choose months, you can choose whatever you want to do. Um, this can be for, you know, um, engagement letters. Just a, as an example. Okay, so you can have those in there. So in your inbox, you can upload files from your filing system. So if you've got a scan snap, you can scan them all into a file in Dropbox and then upload them all into here. Okay, or you can take a photo, which you can do on your software, or you can email it to that inbox. Okay, and you can do all your transactions from here as well. Okay, so you can actually, when you upload a document, you can create a bill from here. All right. So our next bit is our settings. And this is where you've got your organizational details, adding and removing users, managing your currencies, connecting any third party apps, uh, add ons. You've got your invoice settings, you've got your payment services, you've got email settings, payroll settings, expenses, zero to zero, and your custom contact links, creating a, a shortcut. Okay, if you can't find a setting in there, you will find it in the advanced settings, which there's two ways of getting there. One is by here, and another one is by here. Okay, so we're going to go to our business and our invoices. This is our sales invoices. Okay, so we can create a new invoice from here, a new credit note, we can send statements, we can import sales invoices, we can export them. Okay, and this is where it tells us, you know, what we're waiting for. If it's been sent, you will also see that if it's been viewed by the client, if they've viewed it, and if it's a draft or what's actually going on, and you can choose where, what you want to have a look at in there. You can also use the search function if you're looking for something specific, whether it be a, a reference number or whether it be a, a client, and you can have a search of those just to make it a bit easier to find things. Okay, there it is there, okay. Our invoices layout. Okay, so we can go in there and we can choose our branding theme, which is our choice of which invoice, customized invoice we want. Okay, everything else is pretty standard in most, where you've got um, the item code, which again, that is in your, if we go down here, oh, wrong one, this one, business products and services, okay? So that automatically gives you um, quantities and unit prices and things that you can put on there and which account it goes to, okay? Then you can email, you can print PDF. You can also attach documents to them. So if you have uh, staff that write out manual sales invoices and then you need to transfer them into here, you can also upload that file in here, okay? Now you can include it with the invoice or you don't have to include it with the invoice if you don't have to. If you need to edit something, obviously you can edit it from here or if you need to delete it, they don't delete in here, it's a void, okay? You can also copy it. So if you've got multiple like that, you can also copy it or repeat it, okay? If they've got a monthly layout, okay? If you've got a payment, uh, say you've received payment on the day, you can put in the amount the date paid, say today, and paid to whichever bank account and your reference and add the payment. And therefore it will allow you to, uh, it'll find it in the bank feed for you. It'll be nice and green, okay? Then we've got bills to pay. Again, you can use the search function. Um, we're just going to have a look at one of these. So waiting payment, draft paid, it tells you what the status is. It's wonderful. Uh, again, you can use an item code, description, etc. You can add the bill in here. Again, add from library or upload the file directly. You can also add a credit note from here, edit or void or repeat. 
as with your invoices. Okay, so uh, expense claims can be made um, on behalf of your staff. So they've got their own login and they can put in a, a uh, claim to pay it back to your, um, so lunch with client. So that's something that needs to be repaid to uh, that employee. So you've got submitted and you've got approved. Okay. And you've got all these, you can add a new expense as well from here. Okay. Then we've got products and services. So you can track the inventory, uh, you can create a new item, you can set the cost price and the sales price and the quantity that it's sold at. Try that again. Okay, so you can set a lot of information up in there and it, you can see what uh, the recent transactions were on that. Okay, and edit, and here are your options. So you can mark it as inactive if you wanna keep it there, or you can simply delete it. And again, you can attach paperwork to it. Okay. Then you've got your accounting drop-down box. So you've got your bank accounts, as I said. And you can change the order of them in here, up and down. You can manage them from here. So you've got your spend money, receive money, transfer money, your uh, find your bank statements or account transactions. Uh, you can reconcile the account or use the reconciliation report and check the bank rules and import the statement and change these details if need be. Okay, so there's a lot of options there for you. And, and as I said, you can change the order or you can show it on your dashboard or take it off. And it's quite easy to add a bank account as well. Okay, so we're just going to go to the advanced settings. So you can see the find and recode is there, the general journals, the fixed assets, the assurance board. Okay, so monitor the accuracy of your financial data, exporting account data, history and notes, which is fantastic for keeping track of what people have done within the within the file so if there's ever a discrepancy that's that's where you need to go uh, you've got your financial settings so your tax periods bass all those kind of things chart of accounts your tax rates your fixed asset settings your tracking categories so if you're trying to track a particular item or a particular job that would be uh, one that you could use and your conversion balances from the previous year or the previous whatever you, you use prior to using zero. Okay, then we have uh, your reports. Okay, so you've got a lot of your standard reports, you know, your, your balance sheet, you've got a budget manager in there, so you can actually put in a budget within the system and you can get variances and reports and those type of things from here. Profit and loss, you've got a cash flow report in there, movements and equity, profit and loss, uh, business performance, all those kinds of things are in there. Your TPAR report right there, your activity statement, your BAS and your GST reconciliation for end of financial year. Then you've got all your accounting reports, your trial balance, your general ledger, your bank reconciliation summary, all those type of things. And a lot more detailed reports and uncoded statement lines if you want to pull that out and send it to your clients and say, these are the ones I, I need questions on. That's a fantastic report. Okay. Then of course you've got your fixed assets and your depreciation schedules and reconciliations there. You have your sales reports, so your, your detailed reports, your receivables reports, your income by contact, etc. And you can do the same for your suppliers and expenses. Uh, inventory, so you've got a few inventory items there that you can also report on. And then you're, you've got all your payroll reports, so your superannuation or your payroll activity summaries, your leave balances, leave requests, timesheets, etc. Okay, so that's all the, the reports. Uh, when you do a report and you want to save it as a snapshot, you can publish it and then it goes into this published 
section so that you can see it uh, later on. And you can see when it was published as well and who by. Okay, so that's a really handy feature of this system. Um, of course, you've got your chart of accounts. As I said, you can uh, pick one up and put it on your dashboard. So if you open one up, you can show it on the dashboard watch list. Okay, you've got your standard expenses, your, all your standard things, current assets, all those kind of things are all there um, for you to select and, and you just need to select the, the unique code for that account uh, and put in all the details. Okay, so again, you could show the on your dashboard there. Okay, so that, that's all pretty standard, all your standard uh, accounts, chart of accounts. Okay, uh, find and recode, as I said, that's a really handy tool uh, for bookkeepers. You can uh, search by multiple different uh, items. Now it's a demo file, so I'm not quite sure what I'm searching for, but let's have a go. So I can look for um, the bank account that was used uh, and we can go uh, that bank account. Okay, and we can add a, um, uh, we can add a contact or we can tax rate or transaction total, invoice number, all those things. So if I went and searched the bank account, right, it'll bring up all these ones. Okay, so rent, office supplies. So if I didn't want office supplies to be there and I thought that the team coffee was um, also something else, or that one, then we simply go, oh, I bounced, sorry, bounced into the transaction. Flip into a new opening, okay. So then we recode the source transaction, or you can recode it with a, a general journal. So I, I can put all that into um, entertainment, Okay, instead of office expense, so I can review and go, yes, that's what I want to do. You can change the, the account, you can change the GST on there, and you can change the contact, which is uh, fantastic, especially when you're trying to fix a file. So that's find and recode. Uh, as I said, it's standard manual journals, and, and you've got a, um, a fixed asset register here. Okay, so you can uh, put in an asset and you can uh, let them know if what, what it is, what the asset type is, the purchase price, uh, and you can let them know uh, what um, depreciation method it's going to be using. Okay. Uh, then we have payroll. So you've got your employees, your pay employees through the payroll. Okay, so you can see that the pay runs are happening. There's a fortnightly one, there's leave to approve. So it's requested and it needs to be approved. You can create a new task in here. You can do a pay run, a timesheet, or uh, have a look at what's going on with the a employee. So if we go, so that gives you the overview, and we're going to go to employees. Okay, so there's all our current employees. If you've terminated a client, a employee, it'll go into your history. Okay. You also do your end of year um, uh, payments on this in STP finalization from here as well. You can see what calendar they're on, whether they get paid weekly or fortnightly, and when the next payment date is. So that's all there. So that's all standard um, employees. And you just add a new employee and put in all their details. Okay, and then we have the pay run. You can only have one draft at a time. So make sure that you're looking at the uh, the correct one. Okay, and once you've once you've put it through SCP, you can only go back and fix one of them, uh, and it's the latest one. You can't fix anything 
you for that without making another doing another pay run, an adjustment pay run. So this is where we add their hours and it should be set up in their employee card, their rate and all those um, things, if they've got union fees, et cetera, and what type of POYG, superannuation, uh, et cetera, they have. Okay, so that's quite a co complex one, but most of them, are, you'll have many uh, simple ones. Okay, and if you're doing a final pay, you can set it as a final pay as well. So that um, wipes out all the, uh, the leave that's currently there. Okay. So if you're ready to post that, um, if you've run that pay run and it's all correct, then you can post the pay run and then file it with the ATO. Post the pay run, yes. And file with the ATO. Okay, don't forget to send out their pay slips so you can email the pay slips from here as well and lots of reports that you can get. Um, it's gone back, that's okay. So you can, as I said, you can do leave, you can do timesheets um, and single touch payroll setup is right there. So projects, so you can have a look at projects. <coughs> okay, so you can run all your projects from here. So your time, your costs, uh, invoice how you want to uh, and, and track your project performance. Okay, it's, it's got um, add-ons and, and apps available for you as well in there. Okay, and your contact's pretty standard. So you've got your suppliers, you've got your customers, you've got them all in here. It's pretty easy to merge them if you need to, if you um, keep, keep um, duplicating them in there as well which tends to happen a bit. Okay, I'm just gonna go back to our dashboard. Okay, so from here you can, again, use the bank account to spend money, receive money, transfer money if you want to, create bank rules for your bank feed so that things go automatically to an account. Uh, and your reconciliation report are all in here, okay? But you can go straight into the bank account, so we're gonna go reconcile. Now, if you find that that matches correctly, 1025, the date, the amount, yep, that all matches correctly, you just go, okay, that matches, okay? That matches. You can put notes in here to say, um, to your client, I'm not quite sure what this is, can you please elaborate, okay? We can create a transfer to the other bank account if that's the case, or we can create a new one. All right, so city limousines, right? um, and motor vehicle expenses, okay? Um, just as an example. You can add further details and you can add to that a copy of the receipt as well. Okay, so this is where you, you tend to use just your, uh, if it's just on a card, this is how you would process it. If it's on a, um, if it's a bill, then you need to put it through as a bill. Okay, so this is a bank fee. So we know it's a bank fee, it's GC free that's all correct. Sometimes it'll automatically pick up something if you've been doing it on a regular basis. So you just go, okay. okay. If you want to match something, try and find that bill. So you can search, right? And you can do multiple bills. Tick, tick. Okay, that's perfect. They match exactly. If they didn't, you hit the split button and that'll part allocate it for you. So again, we'll try and find our Jakarta. Nope, not on the maple. Jacaranda. Nope. So we can clear that search and have a look. If you've got multi-currency, sometimes you need to untick the show AUD items, okay? Uh, for you to sometimes to find it. 
Okay, we don't have anything in there that kind of matches, but I'm just, as an example, I'm just gonna use this and say split. So I made a $2,000 part payment, remaining is 1850. And you just split and go, okay. So then that, that now has that amount left over. If you've applied a rule, then it will automatically come up. So just make sure the rule does match and you can go ahead and do that or you can edit the rule or you can say, no, um, we don't want it to match. Don't apply the rule uh, and create one at all uh, that makes sense to the transaction, okay? Again, that matches perfectly. So we're just gonna go okay for that, all right? So that's your, your bank feed. So that's how you, you uh, move forward. So there's the options here. You can delete the statement line if it's a duplicate. Like this one looks like it's a duplicate, but it's a day apart, so it may not be. Uh, or you can create a bank rule so that every city parking goes to the parking account and how the GST is, is treated in there. Okay, uh, you've got your cash coding, which can make it a lot simpler to quickly code things if you uh, don't have bills, if they're all like a spend money transaction like your bank fees. Okay, you can sort by payee, right? So we know they're all central city parking, right? We don't have receipts for that. So we go parking, uh, parking, and let's see if we can find parking. Might, okay, motor vehicle expenses. Um, we're going to say it's GST on that. Double check GST on any, um, on all your receipts. And then we just go save and reconcile. And that gets rid of all those transactions. They're reconciled, they're done. Okay, if there's a problem, the first place that you look is in your account transactions and you search for unreconciled, they're usually your culprit. Or if they're imported, have a look at that, uh, and they're not on your bank fee, then um, another thing to, to look at. You can also switch these up so you can see exactly what's going on. So if we put status, yep, there's only one unreconciled, the rest are reconciled. Okay, you can put spent, received, you can sort it however you like. Okay, if you find a transaction is wrong, then you can remove and redo, which you can do throughout the whole thing. So that means it'll remove whatever you've allocated and put it back in the bank feed. Okay, so now that'll be in our bank feed somewhere. Okay, so the reconciliation reports um, works a bit differently to most of the other accounting softwares where you tick the box. This one, you pick the date, and so it tells you the opening amount and the statement balance, and the, well, in this case, imported balance, and there's a difference of 148.50. Where that 148.50 comes from, it's unknown, but the statement exceptions may be able to help you. Yep, so there, there's a duplicate reason. Okay, so we're missing that 148. So it may need to be put back into the bank transactions. If we go back here, so we say, okay, the opening balance. Realistically, the balance in zero and the statement balance are the only ones that are there and they should match exactly. There should be no lines in between. Okay, so they should match exactly. Right, and you can publish your report from here, print it, export it. Okay, you can pretty much export anything in here. Um, Excel, PDF, Google Sheets, etc. Another handy option is to search, use the search function. It doesn't work in the demo file, but you can actually search out uh, transaction amounts. So $5 for 55 cents. Okay, that's another handy thing to use. And you can create new from here as well. Right. And you can um, obviously look at your account from here. And if you need any help, you can always ask for help from here or get support from uh, Zero Central or find an advisor like me. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much a, um, an overview of 
what you can do in Xero. So there are multiple ways of doing things uh, within the system, multiple ways of searching things, uh, multiple ways that you can utilize it for your clients. So if you want any further training or if you need some help with the client file and you're not quite sure or you've just taken on a Xero client and you've never used it in your life, then please shout out. We can do a one-on-one -on -one session and you just need to book it online at www.bookkeepersupport.com.au for a one-on-one -on -one coaching session and we can certainly help you through and find any discrepancies or review the file or help you utilize it much better um, if, if you're unfamiliar with it. Take care, have a wonderful day and have a wonderful week.